Success is never final and failure is never fatal. It's the courage to continue playing that matters. I don't think he'd ever admit this, but I think he knew it was his last shot. Nothing was going to stop them at that point. Because they'd lost in the dying seconds by one point, and now they have tasted victory. The most adversity we've ever faced in, in all my days was in Kelowna. Making that move to one of growth was uh, super crucial in, in my basketball career. When I graduated, I knew I was going to be a coach. The first year of this school, we won one game, lost 32. In opening a new high school, there's a an incredible challenge and trying to decide what, you know, how the school is going to evolve, what is going to be your philosophy. Uh, you, you know, your school has your school has nothing. It's just a it's just a brick and mortar building, and and nothing is in place. So Inkster was the athletic director when the school opened, and it was him and Bergen who worked together to basically build the Gator athletics program. But it took me some time, and it, uh, what I did was I went to. Eight elementary schools, introduced myself, did a one hour uh, a little session, well, it was a half an hour, but by the time we left the school here and came back, I took four of my better players, once we got reasonably competitive after that first year, and I went to visit the elementary schools, put on a little show, handed out a piece of paper and said, you can, you can come to our high school and learn to play. Uh, the first time I met Bergen, I think, was um, grade six or seven during Steve Nash basketball. I think they had like a jamboree type thing here at the high school. I think I was in grade seven, actually, and it was uh, on a weekend. And uh, uh, one, of, one of Bergen's uh, really good players, Jaden Kohi, told me to come out for a training session. First time I met Bergen uh, would have been grade eight. Uh, I was in his P class, and uh, I just remember him being just like a, he seemed like grumpy on the outside, but once you got to know him, like very down to earth, and uh, definitely taught me how to do a push up properly. <laughs> you think about it, I mean, you guys have met Bergen, his personality is larger than life. I have a lot of respect for him, man. He's one of the best to ever do it. Um, one of the best coaches in high school basketball period. There's a lot of coaches, a lot of people believe that you come in with a game plan. But here's where Coach Bergen, you got to give credit. I think all the coaches who win get credit is you have a game plan, but when the ball goes up, that game plan usually goes out the window. You have to be able to coach off your feet. And I think that's where he needs to get some credit for that. But we always had a great rivalry. Not only that, the, you know, we had similar values. You know, uh, Coach Bergen and, and his skaters and, and Terry Fox, we, we always were about defense playing hard-nosed defense regardless of your talent. I understood the things that a player needs to do to become very skilled at the game. And as long as uh, there's a passion to play, hey, I'm there, I'm ready. Um, I've already mentioned playing out of habit. And secondly, building a culture. Well, the culture has to do with competing, okay? competing for every inch of ground. The 2012 was the start of something really, we had been competitive for many years, but 2012, we moved into the final game and lost to Terry Fox by one point. This is gonna sound crazy, but it was like the hardest loss of my life. It probably still is. We were up by 10 points in a championship game against Terry Fox. They started, you know, doing this. And I, I, I never forget it. I ran out to meet them and I said, no, no. And I was loud. Get your hands down. This isn't over. And I think everybody in the crowd thought the game was over. I think uh, Jaden had just hit a huge three to put him up nine. 
And uh, I remember the crowd panning to the Fox crowd and everybody just, you know, thinking, I think it's time to leave. And uh, we made a remarkable comeback. Casey on the baseline, guarded by Hoffman, inside to Slater. Slater kicking it out to Collins. Here is the shot, and it will not fall. It does not fall. But the rebound, oh, they get the rebound at Crooks. Crooks wants the shot. He hits it. He hits it with 2.9. 2.9 seconds! Oh my goodness! And that was a good experience, even though the boys took it really hard. He was like so proud of us because we were like a, an unranked team a lot of the year, like an unranked team who kind of did well late. But you could see he was hurt. That would have been his first one. Like, but there was it was just love. Like it was just love from him. It was like he put his personal feelings aside. Yeah, and I do remember Jaden stepping out of bounds. I remember guarding the final play of the game where we actually lost him. Uh, he was the inbounder and he drove baseline and our power forward kind of stepped out to take a charge and Jaden slipped and stepped on the line. And um, so it was like a tough loss for me to take because I was the one who made the final mistake. Nothing was going to stop them at that point because they'd lost in the dying seconds by one point and now, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, they had smelt what, uh, what this was all about and they had tasted victory, come so close, and yet to win it all is very difficult. Once we got back into school, there was motivation to train. We got into the weight room and guys were lifting like never before. I kind of said like publicly before the season, um, we're gonna win. Like I made that very clear, like our team is loaded. Well, that White Rock Christian team, they had beat us twice. Once in double overtime at the Legal Beagle, a big tournament. And then at the Emerald, Vancouver College, we all again lost to White Rock in overtime. But I think that winning comes as a result of losing. So having lost those two games in tight games, we now knew that we had to pick our game up a little bit more. And uh, Jaden was instrumental in leading that team. In the game, Gets nearly loses possession, finds Mayorga, baseline pass into the corner, tipped out to Coheed. Oh, that's a big shot! Like that, that team was like tough for us. They were so evenly matched. Um, we, when we won, like, it was like a surreal feeling, you know? It's like, you know, going in is number one, it's, it's, it's hard, right? Because everyone expects you to win. And we did it, and like seeing, like for me, it was the craziest thing. Seeing Bergen it was unbelievable. Like uh, to get him one, because he put so many years into this. And the Gator Nation, you're now home to a provincial champion, the Walnut Grove Gators. Because of the year before, we had we lost in that semifinal game, and it it crushed us. So every single time we played Kelowna, we were coming for their heads. Yeah, no, of course you go into that that game, and you you uh, you look at that team. You're like, they're they're a great team. They have a great you know great talent. But you know, I'm not. I, I never thought we were going to lose, and I I went into that game thinking we were going to win. Of course, you know that was a that was a tough game. And that's what kind of pushed us as, and, and Grove and and and. Bergen to really become a better team that next year. That was that was definitely our focus. I think they were one of the closest games we had all year, but that game, we kind of came in with just a swagger knowing we were going to win, um, but it kind of set up, a, it set up a, a, a rivalry for next year. The only real person we had to worry about was, um, you know, the guy in Kelowna that didn't leave. Playing against Mason. Like Mason, Mason Borsier. Like they put a lot of pressure on Mason. The best player in the province was a guy named um, <clears throat> Mason Borsier. Like we lost four times, we're expected to lose. And like it's cliche a lot of people say, it, it's like, it, it gave us a lot of confidence. It's like, they're in their home gym, they gotta win this game. And they know we're not just gonna roll it over. We played Kelowna secondary at the Howard Samara tournament at the LEC, beat them. We played Kelowna secondary at the Legal Beagle tournament in the final, beat them. We played Kelowna at the Emerald Vancouver College, beat them. 
We played Kelowna in Kelowna in front of two and a half thousand screaming Kelowna only fans, beat them in their own gym. And now we came to the provincials, we had to beat them a fifth time. And I mean, I think about that 2017 run. I remember 20 minutes before the Kelowna game, we're underneath the stands at the LEC, and like, we're going into a championship game. Two more people, I just counted up top, looks like we have about 22 of the 30 suites that are full. I poked my head out of the curtain and I just saw like, more people in the crowd that I'd ever seen. Like, I was just like shaking in my boots. I mean, that game probably had close to 6,000 people in the Langley Event Center. Like, that 30 suites that are full with people. Ooh, baby, this is going to be a fun one, man. And here we go with the opening tip between Kelowna and Walnut Grove. With and look who's starting for Walnut Grove. And Jay Cowley is. We went down 10 2, 8 2, I think, to start the game. And we were just like, I remember the nerves were off the charts. Keys against Cowley. And that's going to fall. And or so now. That is nice. There's a jumper there by uh, David Wizard. Uh, and then I think, I think I got, I think me and Jake got this, this block. We both blocked the same guy. And they called it a foul. And something I think after that just kind of like lit a fire under us. You know, I think we called a timeout early and we just kind of regrouped. And we kind of got the ball in Ty's hands and he took over a lot of that first half. And so we're up two, and then Ty comes down, right, like, maybe 15 seconds left in the half, hits, like, a Lita deep Rowell three. He's going to pull up for the long three, and he knocks oh, yes. it down, Ty Rowell. What a huge shot that is with eight seconds remaining in the half. We're up, we're up five points going into halftime, and we're going to the locker room, like, all right, we're going we're gonna to come in, we're going to step on their throats. And in the back of my head, I remember thinking, I was like, like Mason, Mason is gonna is gonna go off. Williamson will feed Borsier for the three from the top, and Mason Borsier was a runner from uh, Woods. Yes, sir. They're piling on the points here. The other end of the floor, it's gonna be Borsier. He had scored 17 points on us in the third quarter. Jump shot! Wow! Oh my goodness! Oh. Mason Borsier! Wow! I learned that. You have to have a bit of a trump card in your back pocket. And uh, for five games, we had never used a certain little defense. We played him a lot that year. I think we played him five times. But, and he played us man-to-man -man every game. And I knew at the end he was going to go to his 1-3-1. One, one. I wanted to pull that card already in the second quarter. And then something in my brain said, no, just wait with it. I pulled that card when the score was tied, 65 all. We had a timeout, and we made the decision to change our defense. So we're playing Kelowna, and they had not used the 1-3-1 a lot through the season, but they had practiced it a lot. And you know, then Alistair Coyle, he'd be, you know, given the 1-3 to Burger. <laughs> So, I mean, the lead changed, I don't know how many times the lead changed in that game, six or eight times, but it was never more than a five-point game. And finally, with about three minutes left, Bergen says 1-3-1. One, one. Um, but I, personally, for me, I think their biggest, um, their biggest adjustment was when they went into a 1-3-1 one, one zone. So I remember when it came out, they just did it, they put it on like that, just in an instant. We didn't know how to, some of our guys didn't know how to react. Um, and it just, it, it's like... Like those three, four possessions of us trying to transition, that that's all you need. And you got to give it to Bergen too for not, not pulling it out too early and not pulling it out in other games in the tournament where we may have needed it and saved it for the right moments because uh, it really caught them off guard. The thing with the 1-3-1 one, one is you need size and athleticism. We have the size, the length, the athleticism. And if my memory serves correct, you guys would have to check the game film on this, but it was a tied game when we went to a 1-3-1 and clone it. I know they did not score again. They did not score on the 1-3-1. I was on the bench with like six, seven minutes left and I was yelling, I was like, we just need one stop and a score and we're gonna win. And we get the stop, we come down, Brett Pump fakes the guy, gets the and one and just like, we just went nuts because we just knew that was like, that was it, that was the end. Like my main goal of the past, Three years before that, transferring into Walnut Grove, I'd want to win that provincial championship. And Coach Bergen wanted to win it as well, just as much, if not more than us. I just like relief. It's the first thought that comes to mind. Like, it was just like, like so much, so much pressure. 
I felt so much pressure from myself to perform and so much pressure from other people. Like we, we were never ranked two the whole year. We were always the favorites. Everybody always played their best against us and just like, finally just like a, a sigh of relief. Like, okay, like we did it. To win a provincial championship, that's really special. Fellas, that, that is, that is something that there's not many people walking the streets that have a championship ring. They just don't. It's funny what you say about him not knowing when he was going to retire because he legitimately didn't. Because he had once said when James Woods came into grade eight, Bergen had said, you know, I, I guess you know, he's thinking of his personal life, he's thinking of himself, he's thinking of, you know, his pension, all that stuff that any human being thinks of near the end of their career. And Bergen had said, well, I guess I got five years left because I'm going to stick with this Woods kid through grade 12. And, you know, all the way through that season, 2016, 2017, I don't know how many times Bergen was asked the question, is this your last year? And he, I don't know. And he really did not know. I can honestly tell you I did not know anything about my future. People, um, parents and, you know, teachers, and I guess it was partly because of my age, um, but everybody was speculating, well, this will be it for him. Yeah, I've, I've heard like, like rumors around the school where he was like possibly thinking about leaving, but I, I was thinking uh, he might stay for my grade, grade 12 year, I was hoping, but I mean, there's no better way to finish off your high school career on like winning a championship. It went on through spring league that year. It went into May, into June, and finally in early June, he said, I'm done. Awesome to go on, out on top. And you know what? That celebration was uh, a terrific celebration. Uh, actually, all of them were terrific celebrations. Um, there's no denying that. And it was, it was a wonderful way to finish my career. by the fact that players still want to come to, to visit the old coach. And I get visits from my players at my house. And some of them even come all the way to, I've moved to Yarrow and they, they drive all the way out. And so it's, it's, it's a real rewarding thing and it feel, makes you feel good. It took six years, 60 big bands to pop off. I went from knockoffs to pulling up at the drop off, the blast off. Now your boy about to take off.